Hey, it's Joe Farrow with Geek Toolkit. I have a ton of info to go through today, so I'm gonna go very fast. This is a review of a 36 watt a Taser Laser. Now, a Taser is a company, they've been around for, I think, a year right now. I think they're celebrating their anniversary. This is their second generation laser, and it is 36 watts of diode power. Now, keep in mind, the toughest, they're the biggest diode I'm aware of is seven watts. To get to 36 watts, they use six different diodes, all firing together, and then they create one beam out of that, that energy. It's a massive, I, I call it the Death Star of lasers. When, I, when they presented it to me, I was like, I have to test this out. I wanna see what you can do with 36 watts. What can I cut with this? So we'll go through all sorts of cutting things and then things I learned when you're dealing with this much energy. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is just assembly. Assembly on this, I, I'm not gonna show the assembly. I think that's kind of weird. What I wanna do is just talk about was it easy or not? Everything on this laser is very easy to assemble despite it being higher end. I'm actually finding that the higher end the laser, the easier they are to assemble because they do things that they're not trying to cut corners on money and they do things like, in this case, they ran all of the cables through the frame. That makes it super clean looking, which is really, really nice. It also means that you're not dealing with a bunch of wire cleanup at the end or like strapping wires to things. It ends up looking much more premium, much cleaner. It works much more efficiently because it can move really fast. So you're not worried about like, like snagging a cable or anything like that. There is a motorized Z-axis, but you don't have to really assemble anything for it. You just mount the laser and the motorized Z-axis has a, a touch off switch to, to basically calibrate itself. So. Uh, despite it having as many features as it had, assembly went together really, really smooth. There is one thing that I would criticize. The left-hand side of the laser, if you assemble that on there and then try to put the rod through the motors, uh, that rod has grub screws that need to be backed out, which are tiny, tiny screws. And if you back them out and they fall into the laser frame, you have to disassemble the laser frame to get those screws out. Uh, I just recommend not putting the left-hand side of the frame on, put that rod in, Tighten those grub screws down, get everything locked in, then put the left-hand side on, no problem. If the grub screw falls out, you just tilt the laser, the grub screw will be right there in your hand, and you can go ahead and reassemble it. So the assembly, I would give it like eight out of 10. It was almost perfect, except for that part. Okay, I wanna go through the features. There is a lot of features, so I'm gonna go really fast through them, but I wanna talk about why these features are important, because some of them, you do not want a 36 watt laser without some of these features. I promise you, it would be super dangerous. So. Uh, the 36 watts is gonna give you speed. That's what that feature is. It's a lot of power, it's gonna give you speed. What other lasers can do, this can do in three, four times as fast as them. You also get depth. Uh, you can do things like you could cut a piece of wood this thick with one pass. So not only is that fast, but a lot of lasers wouldn't be able to make it all the way through this. Now this laser here, when it cuts, it can actually, uh, it has a motorized Z-axis, it can actually go down. So not only are you using a lot of power, but you're actually lowering the laser on each pass to cut even better. So uh, 36 watts, a lot of speed, a lot of depth. Another thing it has is autofocus. Now, whenever you're doing an engraving, uh, and you have got something like this, like this thick, you, the laser needs to be so high above this. Autofocus, the way it works, the laser comes down and it touches off of here and then it goes back up to exactly the right height. It works because they have what's called a motorized Z axis, which means they're up and down, they can actually control programmatically. Very, very powerful feature. Another thing is air assist. Air assist is gonna get you cleaner cuts. You're gonna have less what I call carbon, that blackness that you see around the cuts. You're gonna have a lot less of that. You're also gonna get faster and cleaner cuts because what happens is all the soot and stuff that the laser is creating in the, basically in the kerf or the cut, it gets blown out. So the laser is always hitting fresh wood. So air assist on here is really important. The other thing an air assist does, and again, you don't want a 36 watt without a laser uh, air assist, it creates it, any flames that come off of the cut, it will blow them out so you get less flames coming up. The flames on, on this much power and the heat that's coming off of this thing are immense. And so I, I actually, I made a mistake and forgot to turn on air assist and saw what that looks like. It was fire after fire after fire I was having to put out. It was really bad. It took me a second to realize I did not have air assist turned on in light burn. Turn that on and the cut went super smooth. So air assist, very important. This has one and it also is connected to the laser so that it only comes on when the laser comes on, which I thought was really cool. 
It's got three standard safety features that any high-end laser should have. One is flame detection, which means any flame that gets detected, it will shut off. It also has tilt detection, which means if the laser is ever at a weird angle for any reason, like if it gets knocked off a table, it immediately shuts off. It also has a key, so you can turn the laser off and take the key out, and then unauthorized use can happen. That's great for maker spaces, schools, family members that have toddlers like myself, you know, anything where you have kids. Just a really, really nice feature to be able to lock the laser up and not have unauthorized use of something this powerful or dangerous. As an offline controller, offline controllers are great for lasers like this because really this is what I call a prosumer laser. This is something where you're gonna use it to basically have like a factory at home where you're gonna to wanna to produce a lot of things and it's gonna be very, very fast and efficient, but you're probably gonna to wanna to run the same file multiple times and you can do that without having to drag a computer into the room. It has a 4.3 inch touch screen so you can use that to control it. It also has a phone app that you can use over Wi-Fi so you can take something on your phone and send it to the laser. So a lot of different ways to use this without having to have a computer right in front of the thing. The laser's pretty big on its own. I find that not having a computer that has to be there is really handy. I can go work on a files put on USB, go down and start burning them on the, with the laser and then uh, watch a TV show in the same room. Now I'm gonna talk about and show video of some of the things that I did for testing with this laser. Now it has a G code built in that is a fast engrave. And that fast engrave came out really well. It's a giant eagle's head, and I'll show you that what that looks like at actual speed. Um, it's a pretty large uh, file. It engraved really well. Because it's just pure G-code, I don't know what their settings were. So I did a couple of others. So this here is the 54,000 uh, engrave, and then this is about a 40,000 millimeter per minute engrave. And you can see this was their listed fastest engraving speed. This is on basswood, but the detail is not quite there. The detail got lost quite a bit on that. The thing about that is it's kind of a flex. It's like, you know, this thing has the servos and the linear rails and all of these engineering marvels to make it go that fast and allow it to go that fast. So the fact that it was able to engrave while going that fast and not just fly off of itself is pretty cool. But that's not something I think that you would do normally. Now, now this here is 6,000 millimeters per minute, which is a much more reasonable look. This is a cat face. I'll get you better pictures of this here. This engrave came out really well. It is a bit 3D. It's still burned into the basswood a little bit more, but you know, much more reasonable speed than 54,000 millimeters per minute, but the engraving came out really clean. So that was nice. Now these slate tests, I started out with these here and I didn't have my, my settings dialed in, but these almost look 3D. I mean, they're absolutely astonishing in real life to see. Uh, this one I think was just a poorly chosen file. I was trying to do like this digital circuit board. This one here I had right from the start. This was the last slate tile I had, so I'm glad it came out, but this is what they can look like. And again, this is about five minutes worth of work. Um, very, very clean and grave. Again, it looks very 3D. They list on their site, it's a 0 0.08 millimeter laser focal point. The other lasers they have that are less wattage, like the 20 watt, is a uh, 0 0.06. What that translates to is you can get a higher DPI or dots per inch, which means you can get an even sharper engrave. If you're buying a laser mainly for engraving, I would keep that in mind. If you want a laser that can engrave and cut fast, then this be, this power works, but you are trading off a resolution. That being said, I think these resolutions are fantastic from what I'm seeing. I will work on dialing these in more and do some follow-up videos, but for now, uh, that is the engraving performance of it. Now let's talk about the cutting performance. The first thing I cut was this like kind of little drawer thing. This is off of the boxes.py uh, scripts that are hosted by festy.tool and I'll link to all of that and talk about that more in other videos. But the first thing I cut was three millimeter basswood and it, you know, that is a very typical like basswood or a plywood. It's very typical uh, thickness for lasers. And in older lasers, it took a couple of passes to really go fast or to go through them cleanly. At, at this point, you can go through them at 600, 700 millimeters per minute, which is insane. I was going four times the speed I normally go uh, on these. I normally go about 150 if I'm really pushing a laser like a 10 watt or whatever. I was going 600 millimeters per minute reliably cutting through this stuff. When you're going a factor of four faster, that's like having four lasers as far as your production output because you're gonna cut through and get everything done that much faster. So that's, you know, I keep bringing up that math and I know it's very basic, but it's something to think about. If you're trying to do something commercial, these speeds are amazing compared to what we had available to us in the past. 
Now, these cuts, they were reliable. The, you know, you can see I had to fit the finger joints in here. I had to fit them in on the little uh, desk drawer I did. And then I built the, the square divider as well to organize that drawer. And I'll show you before and after that. But it was a very pleasant experience watching this thing cut that fast. I actually watched almost the entire job run. I did a couple other things here. Uh, this one here, I did a kind of an accuracy test. You know, you cut really sh close and then what this does, let's see if I can separate this one without breaking it here. Uh, but you can see that it allows the wood to bend. Now this one broke because it's super fragile, but I cut on this side, it was perfect. It was actually perfect on both sides till the assembly. Um, but then again, you've got these finger joints that have to be very, very uh, accurate to be able to put these things together. And it was, it was. This one here is a dice roller. You put the dice on the top, you can pull this out and the dice come out in the little tray. Uh, again, super um, reliable cuts, went together really, really well. It was a very fun project. And I like that at the end, I have, you know, something that's useful. Now, in the future, I'm going to do something really cool on the face of this for an engraving. But for now, this was cool. I'll link to those files. Those were all free. I then started actually pushing the laser to see, okay, what could we do with this much power? And I come up with some really interesting things. Three quarter inch, uh, basically pine, I was cutting through like butter with one pass. I would be comfortable cutting three quarter inch pine all day long with this laser as long as I'm cutting through the flat face part. Now this laser is rated to go up through 30 millimeters of wood, though three quarter inch was about 20 millimeters. So then my next thing was to try to get a one inch piece of wood. I didn't have one available, so I cut a piece of wood at an inch and laid it on end and tried to go through it. And this is where a whole bunch of learnings came from. It was fascinating. So while burning, a ton of smoke was coming up and the flame sensor was going off every second. So I had to turn off the flame sensor to see like, can I just get through this at all? I actually got through an inch of wood with this. I was trying to go through a full two by four, but I got through an inch of wood. Uh, but the thing is, it wasn't a clean cut because what it did is it essentially burned and charred. I'll see if I can show you the video for that. Now that's the thing, when you are charring, when you're sending that much energy into wood and you're moving that slow, I was going at about 50 millimeters per minute, it's, it's just so much energy in a small area, it's gonna catch fire or it's gonna burn. You're basically destroying the wood versus being able to slice through it at that point. I tried multiple passes thinking that might help, but really it didn't. Uh, I was just basically sending more and more heat into the wood and it would basically catch fire on me. Now, I tried with air assist, without air assist, I just was never able to cut through a full one inch of material or 30 millimeters, which is what they claim. Now, I've sent a mail out asking them, how do, you know, what kind of wood did they test on? But that kind of came, you know, that kind of taught me something like just because they say you can cut through 30 millimeters, it's probably a very specific test that they do. And it doesn't mean that you should count on being able to cut through an inch of any, you know, thing that you see uh, that's wood because all of the woods are very different. Last thing I want to do is uh, I did a dog tag test and I did two of them. I uh, did this one here. This was supposed to be Snoopy. You can see that came out awful. And then I did this one here. This one came out beautiful. This is uh, basically these, these tags that are stainless steel. You can mark stainless steel. Again, it's a diode laser. You can't cut clear acrylics with it. You cannot cut, um, you cannot cut metal with it, but you can mark it. And the reason being is that there's a protective coating on stainless steel, and that's what you're marking. You're not actually removing metal here. You're just basically permanently marking it. There are other things that you can do really cool too, like there's what's called the mustard trick. You can put mustard on the stuff and um, etch and stuff like that. But yeah, for stainless steel. Now, I did not get time to do an acrylic test for this review. Uh, I will do it. They claim up to 15 millimeters. There's other YouTubers that have done acrylic cutting, but I wanted to do more like projects and kind of show like, you know, what is the benefits of, of having this laser and how, how cool is it to be able to create stuff like this? Okay, let's do the, the final wrap up and get this thing uh, basically to you. Here's the thing. This laser is all about speed and efficiency and uh, it's a prosumer laser is the best way I can describe it. This is a $1,200 to $1,600 price point laser based on what sale it's on. I'll link to it in the description of the lowest price I can find. But this is not a entry level laser. This is like the Porsche or the Ferrari or the supercar of laser of diode lasers, right? Now you get CO2 as another level and you go up to 
Galvos, that's another level. But for his, for his diode lasers, this thing is just on another level for everything from the experience to the speed to the features to the safety. And um, no corners were cut. This thing feels premium all the way through. So who is it for? If you're a business where time is money, this is for you. This project right here takes 45 minutes on a five or 10 watt laser, and it took about 12 to 15 on this one. So that just gives you an idea. It's about four times faster is what I was seeing across anything I did with this laser. If you're a makerspace and, you know, again, that's a time is money type thing, but you wanna get through people through as much as possible or a school, then this is a great laser for you because you're gonna be able to get people to come in and do a lot of projects and get back out again. Um, if you're cutting through very thick material for whatever reason, then yeah, this is gonna, you're gonna need this much power. This laser does it really well. It has the base, the ability to, that powered Z, you can actually programmatically move Z down on each pass, which is very powerful to get through projects. So um, any kind of deep cutting, any kind of fast engraving, this laser is gonna excel at. If you own a laser today and you're looking to upgrade, then I would say, you know, I've gotten the experience to use a lot of lasers on this channel. And this laser is felt like an upgrade in almost every way. It's faster. It's just clean the way the wiring is. It's very efficient. It's very reliable. Um, the it's very felt very safe because of things like the limit switches and the flame sensors. It just had a lot going on. The air assist is awesome. The offline controller is great for repeatability. Like there's so many features going on with this thing that it definitely feels like a good upgrade if you already have a laser and you want more power great upgrade there and you'll understand why the speed is so powerful or so useful uh versus somebody that's never used a laser before walking into this and being like well that's it you know that's how fast it goes they may not understand because they've never seen a 5 or 10 watt or 20 watt laser cut so who is this not for well that person the person that's never used a laser before and who is just getting in and not sure if you're gonna like really love the hobby, I would not start at this laser. This is not your starter laser. This is not the beginner laser. Um, I would start probably lower. And then if you're like, wow, this is really slow and you wanna upgrade, then yeah, then you go to this. So yeah, that's who I, I, I recommend this to. Uh, people that have had a laser or who time is money. I wanna thank a taser for sending this out. I hadn't wasn't very familiar with their company. They've been very friendly, very, innovative, I would say, in the way that they've approached this um, system. You know, I've gotten to use a lot of different companies lasers now and the stuff that they did, like adding LEDs to the front to show how power, how much power is coming out They're They're doing new stuff that other companies aren't doing. And some of it I find very useful. Uh, the, the, oh my gosh, the autofocus is amazing. Every laser I wish had that, but they're trying and, and they produced a quality product and I'm very thankful to be able to, to show it to you and honored, and if you have any questions, just ask them in the, or the uh, comments below. I'll take care of you and uh, answer everything I can. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Joe Farrow, Geek Toolkit. Until next time. I've been dreaming on in my head like I've seen it. A life worth living is a life with meaning. I'll do what I love to.